The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to the webinar titled Elevation to the Next Generation of Shared Service Center. Jointly presented by Newton Software, a global software vendor with products and solutions in the space of business process management, enterprise content management, customer communication management, and Deloitte, a global leader, tax, audit, enterprise risk, financial advisory, consulting, and management consulting. I thank you all for the overwhelming response we have obtained for this webinar. I am Sumit and shall be your host and the moderator for this webinar today. In today's webinar, we will try to understand on the current state of automation in shared service centers, what is going to be the future state, and the impact of automation on various activities in a shared service center. We do hear a lot of buzzwords like strategic transformation, last mile automation, cost optimization, what across automation. Our esteemed speakers will throw light on these and what digital means for an SSC. One of the key takeaways from this webinar is uh, how the shared services uh, will be taken up to a next level and how an agile platform should connect all activities in a shared services to a business outcome. Today, we have Mr. Samir Wadwa, who is partner, Global Capability Centers and Digital Transformation, Deloitte India, and Mr. S. Sriram, who is GM, Global Shared Service Center Practices, Region Softwares. Samir will discuss the elevation to uh, next generation of shared service centers, and then Sriram will talk about delivering values to shared services and adding value to clients. At the end of the presentation, we will have a question and answer session. We request you to type your questions in the question window of your go-to webinar anytime during the webinar, and I shall take them up at the end of the session with our experts. With that, I hand over to Samir. Thank you. So, uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, thanks for attending this uh, webinar on taking shared services or global in-house centers to the next level. What I will do in the next uh, maybe about 15 minutes is talk about some of the trends we are seeing uh, across uh, shared service centers or global in-house centers as they move towards their next level of uh, evolution or maturity and just talk about what are the trends we are seeing uh, across across these centers across the world before i get into uh, some of the trends that we're seeing in the shared service centers I, maybe it's a good thing to step back and and see what are the macro trends impacting a lot of global organizations across the world and it's important because some of these trends have a bearing on how shared service centers are operating today, what are they aspiring to operate today, uh, and what's the kind of value they're trying to add value add to, to kind of bring to their uh, parent organization. So number one, uh, you know, it is it is a lot uh, it is a lot more technology driven uh, discussions or decisions these days. If you kind of roll back maybe four or five years ago, it used to be about all about people or a large part about people supported by processes and underlying technology. But that concept has kind of turned on its head over the last maybe year or two years. It's most of the discussions we are having seen with shared service centers leaders across the world are, uh, are technology initiated or technology driven, supported by processes and people. And people is important, is still important, but the context of people changes. So, you know, just imagine in a world in, in shared services where processes are completely automated. There is seamless kind of, so, you know, span to span automation, complete automation of processes. In that case, what do you want or what, what do shared service uh, center leaders want their people to do? What kind of capabilities or competencies do I need to, to do I need my, my, uh, my staff to have? Do I really have them as, uh, do I have those capabilities or how do I kind of build those capabilities? Those are much more important questions uh, we are seeing shared service centers ask, uh, you know, and that's been a major shift over the past few years. The workforce itself is changing. Uh, you might have experience around bots, around crowdsourcing, across the, the millennials, economy. So the entire workforce itself, uh, 
the definition or the concept of workforce is itself changing. There's a much more reliance on what we refer to as, or what the industry refers to as, augmented workforce, which is not just the, the on-role people on that in the team that we have here in the centers, but a mix of other uh, relevant uh, workforce as well, including bots. Isn't that an important? And, and that trend will go on, will go on much more faster in the next few years. So that's something for uh, for tech service center leaders to think through what kind of talent model they need to have. And the reason for that is some of the cognitive, uh, the automation and cognitive tools are rapidly advancing. So what used to be uh, pilots a couple of years back are much more at scale programs or projects now. That's been a take in, taken a significant leap. Some of the maturity of some of these tools. Uh, in terms of doing at scale, uh, you know, innovation or at scale automation, so there has been a huge jump in the capabilities and the functionalities of some of these you know, technologies as well. Customer expectations, you will, you know, I believe all of uh, all of you would would agree and you know uh, acknowledge those are changing. So it's not only a, it's not uh, it's not about delivering on SLAs, which was the traditional definition of shared service centers. It's much more um, more than that. It's delivering on customer experience, especially on the pile of data that shared service centers sit on. How can I really impact the customer experience? And that, that's what uh, shared service centers are now questioning and actively discussing with their internal stakeholders. Cost pressures are still there. Uh, they will. They were number one uh, on top of the mind or top of the agenda for for business and shared service leaders a few years back. It went down to maybe number two or number three a couple of years back. But again, with the slowdown, the general global slowdown that we've seen across uh, across industries, it's again come back up as one of the top two, uh, if not top three, uh, agendas for shared service leaders. So while uh, we talk about all the business impact shared services uh, want to uh, want to kind of uh, generate or realize for business, cost is still is still an important important consideration both for shared centers as well as business as they're looking at uh, their shared service centers. And finally, I think the risks to business are much more global. We are living in a in an in an age in a world where geopolitical risks are much more uh, than what we've seen in the recent past. So how do kind of shared service centers align to align their products and services and their kind of discussion their interaction with business to as to mitigate uh, you know geopolitical risk those are also important discussions that we've kind of hearing uh, shared service center leaders have with their uh, have with their customers and stakeholders. Now what that means for for shared services uh, is is the chart that you see on the right. Expectations from shared services, as I said, have, have changed significantly over the past few years. It is no longer about just delivering strategy. What that means, it's no longer just where we're, we're in a corporate or HQ or businesses uh, or you know functions, functional leadership, tell shared service centers what to do. It's no longer, let's say, a CFO function or a CFO organization telling uh, the finance team in shared services to deliver certain processes or deliver certain kind of SLAs. It's more around driving strategy now. Can I, how can I help kind of drive, work very closely with let's say the CFO function or the HR function or any other function that uh, I support as a shared service center. How can I help my business and function leaders to drive the strategy? I think that that's really important. I mean, that's been one of the biggest change that we've seen over the past few years. The words that you see on the left of the slide, those are top of the mind words that come into mind, come that come that uh, that come to mind uh, when we uh, speak to you know shared leaders of large shared service centers, and these are fairly large mature organizations in terms of shared service centers uh, who've been done, you know uh, who've been running these centers for you know, more than you know eight to ten years. They're fairly kind of mature, fairly have that kind of size scale, and have been in the in the business for a number of years now. This is what they're seeing business wants them to do, not only to deliver strategy, but to kind of help them drive strategy. And to drive strategy, you have to be positioned as a, as a business partner, not as a, not as a service provider, if I could use that uh, terminology. You have to be, shared service centers have to be uh, positioned as service providers for, for the business. <clears throat> Which means from running the business, it has to be transforming the business. Shared service centers have to uh, cannot just kind of live in their own uh, small world of 
uh, where the process starts and ends with shared services. They have to big think big. They have to go beyond their traditional uh, boundaries of shared service centers. Look at the entire process. Uh, whatever happens in the business as well, and kind of proactively without business asking them proactively go back to the business and uh, with, a, with a proposition. This is how we can impact or change the business. Which will, what will, what will, what it will deliver is not just SLEs, but uh, a truly differentiating customer experience, which is what being asked for uh, uh, by business, which is what business demands these days. Shared service models to to to, uh, to, uh, to deliver on these expectations that I kind of talked about on the last slide. Shared service models need to need to evolve. The traditional model of shared services, which you can see on the left side of the screen, you know, people are realizing that that might not be the model for the future. The traditional model is where you have different horizontal or different businesses. Uh, each uh, having their own function in shared services, which is depicted by that green bar at, at the bottom. And you know, in the, shared, the shared service center has different teams or different towers, uh, whatever you might call it, different kind of capability or different services to support different businesses. So it's, it's typically a, a model where shared services acts as a transaction processor. It's a lot more support or service kind of driven, service provider kind of driven. Focus uh, is still headcount, is still number of FTs, number of people I have in terms of chargeback models or mechanisms, and in the kind of scale or the kind of work that I do with various either business or market or functional teams. It's, it's much more administrative in nature. What people are trying to do or what leading centers are trying to do is move to the model that you see in the right. What, man, what that means is shared service centers or the DOB capability centers are being positioned as strategic assets for the entire organization. What that means is, in addition to what you're doing on the left, you, know, you are providing insights to the business. You're not just running uh, certain processes or transactions for the business, you're providing insights to the business. You are building capabilities that the organization can, cannot build or might not have built uh, in other parts of the, of the ecosystem. Those, in, those capabilities are being incubated within within uh, within those capability centers. So there's a lot more innovation focus, a lot more integration focus, and that has resulted in a uh, in, uh, in in multiple or more creative career paths for for the business, uh, for for the for the staff and talent. Not only for the uh, not only for the shared service center, but for the entire organization as well. There are a number of examples you could see in, from the industry where. Some of these innovation teams around product development, around uh, around marketing, around uh, sales enablement, around uh, uh, financial planning and analysis, around HR, HR or people analytics. Those kind of competencies are incubated within within GBS or within the uh, the global capability centers, and those are then kind of providing uh, a much more kind of value add uh, services that. Uh, the, the center offers to their uh, you know, stakeholders or internal customers. That's the model where uh, most of the centers are uh, aspiring and evolving to. And it, it's not an easy journey. Uh, it's not something that centers transform from, from left to right uh, on day one or, or year one. It's, it's, it's a long roadmap. It's a roadmap, but people have to be very, or centers have to be clear on what, what that picture on the right means to them. And it, it could mean different things to different people. Let me show you what uh, what that picture could mean for some of the more lead, or what that means for some of the more leading kind of centers. So, if you may you know, take a look at the picture uh, here on the slide, so to 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 be positioned at as at the center of the ecosystem for the entire organization, leading uh, centers, leading shared service centers or capability centers. In our experience, having worked with a number of similar centers across the world, focus on one of these six areas. They could position them as the as an uh, position themselves as an engine room for the entire organization, right? Which means that I provide uh, that, which means I have a lot of scale. Right? I do most of the transaction work end to end. Uh, controls and compliance work as much as possible. I'm covering end-to-end -end processes for a large part of my organization, for my organization across the business. So, which means that importantly, I am leaving and creating bandwidth and capacity for the business to focus on 
poor business activities rather than uh, a lot of internal looking or transactional or administrative activities. You could play shared service centers could play one of that's this role, for example, or they could position themselves as a nerve center, which means focused on providing data backed insights to the business around functions, around uh, uh, around certain business problems, and, and broadly kind of providing analytics as a service to the business. You could position yourself as an enabler, which means focused much more on innovative uh, ideas or innovative models or innovative projects around emerging technologies, mobility, robotics, uh, IoT, etc., and so on and so forth as a catalyst or as a as a, as a talent hub or a talent magnet uh, where you can attract and groom a particular type of talent, and then then those can be then uh, cross pollinated across the organization. So you, know, you could kind of go to that model on the on the left on the screen that you see across multiple ways. I think it's important for shared service centers to realize where they are, what value they are providing to business currently, and where they want to be, and how do they get there in terms of the roadmap and the specific capabilities, some of which you see on the right slide on, on the right of the slide here. That's an important kind of discussion we're or a kind of a debate we're seeing uh, happening between center leaders as well as their uh, business partners or business kind of stakeholders. We need to, to go to that right model model on the right. In our kind of view or experience, there are three three key areas that uh, uh, or three key impacts rather that you know shared service centers need to deliver to the business. Number one is customer experience. So if you recall uh, one of the past slides, it's no longer delivering SLAs, it's delivering customer experience, which means personalization, knowing your customers well, uh, having giving them access as much as possible, real time 24 seven, and doing a, and, and kind of uh, engaging them in a much more collaborative manner. That, that's that's you know very important. The second bucket is around insights. We spoke about in the last slide, uh, the kind of data shared service centers are sitting on uh, and the key is to proactively go to the business there not not when business asks but given the, that kind of data that centers are sitting on how can we proactively uh, you know generate and deliver insights for you that help you to see for decision making right? that's important and the third bucket is around speed in terms of agility in terms of automation in terms of just making sure that the turnaround times the kind of throughput velocity of various processes, products or services that the center runs. I think though, though this is the business is a significant a business is a significant impact in terms of speed and agility. These three kind of key areas are 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 the kind of uh, uh, trends that we're seeing centers you know, uh, you know focusing on uh, especially these days. What that means in terms of a model for shared services or the or a or a uh, you know, Nirvana or an ideal state model uh, for centers, for many centers is, if you just focus on, on the top of the slide, you have the customer or the stakeholder layer on the top, it could be business units, geographies, uh, functions, etc. And then you have an enablement layer at the bottom, which is how, which is the internal finance, internal HR, internal infrastructure, or internal processes for, uh, for, the, uh, for the center. And the green box in the, in the middle, is the actual core or the heart of where the uh, you know shared service center or capability center uh, capabilities reside that's kind of structured into two parts <clears throat> part one which you see on the left slide is the general operation typical operational services but these are structured more as end-to-end uh, -end processes cutting across functional silos departmental silos across you know, organizational boundaries it could mean recruit to retire it services source to pay that's the traditional kind of model, but more and more end to end, much more scale driven and, and as much as possible, completely automated running in a factory model, almost 24 seven. That, that's one, one capability. And the other capability is around more as a, as a service capabilities. So if around, around knowledge management, content management, reporting, you know, analytics, data quality, intelligent automation, change management, these, I think these capabilities on the right is what we are realizing uh, do not, may not sit in any, in any specific function of the organization there. So that's the opportunity for shared services to kind of pick and choose where they want to see, you know, a kind of, uh, uh, you know, make an impact to the business, incubate and cultivate, incubate and cultivate that, cultivate and grow those capabilities, and then kind of uh, have a much more value added kind of discussion with the client. 
It's not to say that only the, the capabilities on the right are important. Uh, the left are equally important. You cannot deliver right uh, the, the capabilities on the right unless you have uh, as, a capable, as, a, as a shared service center, you know, mastered uh, or kind of earned your stripes on to deliver the capabilities uh, on, on the left in a much more uh, automated, efficient, standardized manner. And on the top, you see, uh, you know, customer experience, which is which is absolutely, absolutely critical to deliver these services. Again, it's not just delivery of services that customers are or stakeholders are expecting. It is the experience they're expecting, right? In terms of brand and talent, the kind of the kind of people we hire, the kind of uh, experience strategy that we have for the customer engagement and the customer experience strategy that we have, the governance processes around shared services, so that uh, you know our stakeholders have an active uh, you know, buy-in and us active say in how shared services or these centers are governed, and stake customers, stakeholders have the ability or the capacity to interact with us in a, across a number of channels. So that's our kind of view of uh, uh, of what a North Star model of uh, of world-class uh, center would look like. I think it will be important. I think it's you know, be a good exercise to baseline where you know you are and then where you want to go. And to what extent do you want to kind of replicate some of these uh, concepts that we've been kind of uh, talking about? And just kind of finally, uh, you know, to go to go to that model on the right, there are four areas that uh, that most or many kind of centers or organizations focus on. Number one is strategy, which is you know what's the what's the strategy for the shared service center? If you recall the two models, uh, the traditional one on the left and the uh, more the the more futuristic one on the right. How far do you want to go? What are our ambitions? And what you know what does it take to kind of win there, or to go there and kind of deliver? Second is governance. How do we kind of develop a strong governance, a much more integrated governance between uh, the, our stakeholders and and us as a shared service center? In many centers, there might be. Uh, functions or processes where there's a dependency or a reliance on a third party provider as well. So how does our governance take care, look at, uh, how do we address that governance in a much more integrated manner? How are we, how should we structure ourselves to much more align, to understand the business uh, needs and kind of be much more responsive to the business? And finally, I think that that's something that Sri Ram would talk about in much more detail uh, in terms of operation and technology. How do we make sure that our operations are completely as much as possible, uh, you know, automated and streamlined, standardized, automated, and what are the kind of, uh, uh, you know, emerging and kind of exponential technologies we can use, especially in the kind of uh, trends we're seeing in the market these days to, to make an impact on the business. So that, that those are the kind of four areas that uh, business needs, shared service centers kind of uh, need to think about. And finally, I'll just end with this slide. Just, just giving you some key, six key takeaways on, uh, uh, you know, how do you kind of move the needle in terms of shared service centers. Number one, as you can see, is leadership and sponsorship. It all starts with the tone at the top and the kind of shared service uh, leadership we have and how effectively they can position the, the center in, in terms of business which also means creating a strong brand. It, it does not need, it, it, it needs, it not, I mean, shared service centers are no longer being uh, viewed and created and viewed as just a, a back office function. It has to have a brand identity of itself and, uh, and a magnet to attract and retain, uh, you know, uh, good, good, uh, good talent, right? So you need to have a, a create a specific brand for, for shared services. Enable cross-functional structures, right? So if you see, recall in the last slide, most of the operational processes were uh, were end-to-end, -end, cutting across uh, functional departmental silos there. So we have to kind of encourage that structure within shared services. And once we do that, that allows us to take that discussion back to business saying that we're, we're, we're operating in a cross-functional manner. And this is how you need to kind of operate as well, right? You know, and then gives us an opportunity to cultivate new talent. And some of that new talent is uh, is manifested itself in terms of uh, GPOs or global process owners, right, who are responsible for that end-to-end -end process cutting across functional boundaries. That's not a concept that uh, traditionally many businesses have outside of shared services, but that's a new kind of kind of talent pool that we can we have an opportunity to kind of uh, uh, create and cultivate within shared services. And finally, I think leveraging data again, you can't stress more on, on the fact that uh, data is, is the new oil, right? And 
the more the shared service centers have that advantage that they're sitting on a huge uh, load of data and being uh, and kind of leveraging data to improve processes transform business i think that that's that's going to be more and more important uh, as an expectation going forward and just finally shared service centers you might have heard this in the past as well need to run uh, run uh, you have to run it like a business right you have to see this i mean the leadership team of shared services have to think like uh, this is a, this is a startup, right? We are we are we are entrepreneurs. We are running this as a business. So that kind of mindset, that kind of leadership, that kind of culture needs to kind of uh, percolate down the organization within uh, within the entire shared services, so that uh, you know you're kind of positioned uh, on on the on the picture that you see on the right as as the as a strategic asset in the center of the functional or organizational uh, business ecosystem. So that's uh, that's what I wanted to kind of talk about. Uh, I hope that gives you a good sense of where the shared services world is heading and what are some of the more mature leading centers are doing. I'll be happy to answer questions at the end of the session. Uh, please hold your questions till that time. Back to you, Shil. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, Sami. Uh, it was invaluable insight into the future of uh, shared services and the future of it. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Appreciate your valuable time for this. webinar. Continuing with what uh, Samir is, I'm just going to talk about how the digital transformation tools have been achieving the business relationship services. Any ideation or more of conversion of the ideation that Samir was talking about initially, where he was talking about what drives the shared service or an enterprise automation. Right. So we, we are looking at more of value creation or are driven as a vision for the shared service. And these visions are translated as KPIs. And these uh, uh, visions are created as KPIs, which are very important for the shared services to transform over a period of time. And for every KPI that we talk about, there is an enabler. Right. So what we do is that we have a vision and at periodic intervals, we try to validate whether these visions have been realized or not. And what are these validations? These validations are the baby steps of these visions in transforming the shared services to a globally transformed organization. As we know, there is a time lag for the vision to get translated into the right enablers. Right? So what we have is a vision and a validation, and there is an in-between catalyst which acts as a, a transformation agent from the vision to the validation. And when we talk about particularly the digital transformation, we have various tools and technologies which help in translating these visions to the end objectives or the end results. What these uh, visions are? Let's see. One, we talk about the business process management where the entire process orchestration takes care of. The second is the content management, enterprise content management. We talk about the entire content that originates into the shared service for various transformation, which could be a conversion to a transaction or it could be a reference point of view or it could be from more from a governance and audit perspective. And of course, uh, we talk about the robotic process management to take care of all the integrities of uh, uh, automation. The mobility for all the people who are extremely mobile but are very critical in performing the shared services activities. And analytics, as Samir was talking about, which is going to take a different turn of how the shared service used to work previously and how they are getting transformed as part of the new initiatives. And what these 
platforms are supposed to do, what these tools are supposed to do, is a host of features and functionalities that help the digital transformation exercise of converting the vision into results. Having said about the catalyst for driving the vision to results, the key imperatives for the digital transformation is Darpan, can you help me on this? Sure. Darpan, can you help me mute uh, all participants? Sure, I'll do that. Darpan, I think it's still here. Once. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead. I'm really sorry for that. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, the, uh, the digital transformation focus areas. The first and foremost is the strategic transformation. While we talk about the uh, ASIS movement to the to be environment, or we call it as the lift and shift, or we talk about the uh, uh, pick and move, what we what is more important is how these business processes get transformed into a technology driven. Uh, automation, which takes care of the shared service internal organization or the stakeholders, as well as the stakeholders who are beyond the shared service, which are who are part of the retail organization. So when we talk about strategic transformation, what KPIs are going to measure the shared service success on the activities that happen out of the shared service? This is more important from my perspective where even Samir said that the SSC feature is on transforming business. Now, if I have to transform my business, I should know what my business KPIs are and I should be able to distribute the business KPIs with the shared service KPIs so that I will be able to transform my KPIs first and then get into the retail organization and take care of the transformation over there as well. The second most important is I need to have a visibility of what is happening inside my shared services. And this visibility can come only through last mile automation. What is last mile automation? Right from the time a transaction is pushed into the shared service to the time it moves out of my system into uh, the retained organization and beyond. The entire activities should be part of the digital framework. I should not have a manual activity happening outside of a digital framework. This will increase the visibility of what is happening within my organization and it will help us in a lot of ways of uh, certain areas, like what Samir was talking about is about better and faster decision making. Uh, how do I make faster decisions? It's if I know what has happened in my organization in the previous activities for this transaction. If I have a visibility, I will be able to take a quick and faster decision. Right? Second, uh, the third most important is about the cost optimization. Obviously, uh, there is a need, even uh, Samir spoke about that, saying that uh, there is a continued pressure to reduce cost, which is one of the key drivers and optimizing continuously is more important, which means I should look at platform scalability to take care of process improvements and also application rationalization where we speak about consolidating multiple applications into a single application so that I can do away with those applications, maintenance, resources, skill set and much more. Now that we have established a shared service, it is not about saying that, okay, I've done, I've achieved and I'm good to go. What happens is, uh, again, going back to Sabir's statement of continued pressure on cost, we need to revisit our method of implementation, our KPIs and lot of other factors which are driving us and look at how more we can optimize the processes or bring in more efficiency so that there is a continuous cost improvement 
on an year to year basis on whatever we have deployed so continuous process improvement is more important and that is driven through the digital transformation space obviously when i keep saying about bpm rpa and the, the digital transformation technologies we there is an expectation that these technologies for sure will help me to take care of the activities that happen as part of the mission services right so the kpis obviously are business related but beyond kpis what else it is going to help me there is an expectation that it will keep increasing my efficiency process efficiency it will keep increasing my productivity which is the fte productivity and obviously there are multiple other things which are intangible where it says that no transaction will be having a non compliance because of audit or in as part of an audit uh, that has been done so the adherence to the standard operating procedure is a more key important area which will drive or will bring the trustworthiness within the shared services as an as an organization obviously since we are talking about last mile automation we get better visibility audit and compliance of all these things we may have still have to continue to have lot of applications which are more of a sacrosanct for holding my data and doing lot of activities of reporting and other things but what a digitally transformed process or automation gives you is a are two important things the first is the exception handling even if there is an error in the transaction that has come in from the retained organization or from the third parties he still will be able to account that as part of the shared services he still will have a visibility of how we, what is going on he still will be able to raise the discrepancies that are there as part of the exceptions get them resolved and get them pushed indirectly this exception handling is to, going to take care of the entire sla monitoring required for the shared services organization let us take a step back and we look at the business expectations as well as samir was talking about he spoke lot on business expectations business value and uh, uh, initiatives let me try to bring in a concise uh, uh, as concise aspects of what he was talking about and how digital transformation uh, tools and technologies help shared services in achieving tangible and intangible benefits first and foremost is efficiency which everybody speaks Now, what is more important here is how do I reduce my cost, which we spoke about in the last slide. The second most important is standardize. Shared service may be a culmination of multiple entities pushing their transactions into the shared service, which means if I have multiple SOPs or standard operating procedures as part of each of my entity, I should be able to combine them, bring as a standardized way, and ensure that the process that runs within the shared service. is uniform across the organization irrespective of the entity the nuances of the nuances of changes that are followed within the entity can be handled as part of the process framework itself so that only those activities which are different between entities can be looped into the process routing mechanism and then it follows the same set of activities which other entities follow the third most tangible benefit is predictable how we can make business predictable now to make business predictable the transactions the processes should also be predictable how do i make it more predictable is through series of measures of straight through processing getting into first time kind of first time right kind of scenarios end to end automation obviously will take care of the productivity and the simplification of the processes will also increase the employee productivity intangible obviously the stakeholder delight because the query when never raised the way we respond back at the shortest possible time with more of information relevant information will ensure that the delight of the stakeholders are there when we increase the real time visibility of data and associated data elements like transactional data and non transactional data presented to the users together it will be easier for the users to uh, 
to take care of the way they do the transaction processing, posting, and also will be able to take care of the informed decision making. Right. So this is what we are talking about as Industry 4.0 and the informed decision making through lot of data analytics, predictive processing, trend analysis, and the profiling of the transactional elements like vendors and customers and uh, the way the uh, users are the way the transaction flow has been all of them helping ensuring that the decisions are more informed than just saying the transaction is valid. When we speak about digital transformation, uh, it's not just about deploying a tool and getting things done. It's not about saying that I buy a product, okay, I deploy it, is it okay? What happens in case of digital transformation is, as Samir was also talking about, the user experience is key to the optimized way of working in a business. And to get an optimized way of execution or working as part of the business process automation within a shared service, we have to understand the layers of applications that are there, which is like the core application. And the integrations available with various applications that are the second set applications, bring them as part of the unified platform, which is a combination or combination of content management, business process management, extraction technologies, enterprise rules management, analytics, reports, uh, Process design, uh, what you say, process orchestration tool, digitization, uh, robust form design, uh, or forms representation. And, uh, so many things get culminated as part of a platform layer, which helps in creating a solution as required by the shared service in accordance with the business transformation that has been drafted. So if you have a process where it starts from the retail organization, Flows into the shared service and then goes back to the retail organization. Then this solution layer should be able to encapsulate everything right from the sourcing technology, sourcing route to the end uh, uh, submissions, take care of them, bring in a template, which is a which is like a ready-made solution process, but can be changed to suit the client requirements, very dynamic in nature because they are highly parameterized. They bring in the standardization. They can scale in volumes by users, by entities. Tomorrow you have mergers and acquisition. You will be able to add more entities in a GV. The best practices of technology and process adopted across simple to use interfaces. And that flows into the user experience, which is I, the user can work from any device or any device or any device. The experience will be the same. So what you get is a seamless integration, consolidation, consolidated into a platform, which takes care of the end-to-end -end automation, where wherever there is a automation on this, if there is no automation, then there will be an automation as part of the digital, as part of the framework, the latest of the technologies. Then the solution layer brings the best practices. Near exact needs because these templates or accelerators can be easily modified, and then the user experience, which is a class world class, where they are shielded based on, they are shielded from the underlying applications, but they get the best of it. Uh, uh, we get into the technology and about what we have done. Let me talk about a sample case study, a representative case study. This is for a large agro trading organization. They have global operations across 70 countries, more than 50,000 employees. They need enough products. They have buying and outside. Multiple countries and countries. What processes we have automated for them is people, which is the uh, modules, for stable order to cash, report. Some are in the master data management, like vendor onboarding and all. And they also have a shipping of logistics, which is more. From a supply chain application, as you see, a lot of the applications we have integrated with. What is more important is not about the digital and hunting the required business benefits to the shared service, which has scaled up 
beyond what it was a couple of years back. So what we, what we have established as part of the entire transformation initiative is that any transaction that lands in the, in the shared service from any of the countries and related to any of the third party integrated systems that we see on the top, they get processed within one day. Which is the end to end, which includes discrepancies and unwells and other aspects. So it is like to say that if a transaction comes today, 95% of the transaction will exit the shared service today. What is indirectly implied here is that I need to have my workforce based on the volume of transactions I'm going to have on a day. If I have a seven day turnaround time, my resource augmentation will be based on the seven day loop. Here we are trying to optimize the resources on one day, a couple of days. The second most important KPI that we have been able to achieve is that any transaction that comes in, 16% of them has a first time part passing, which means a lot of checks at various levels to ensure that the transactions that comes in are pre validated and when it comes to shared service, they are more of just process. And 91% is the average team productivity. And not, it's not simpler, it's not about one or two processes. We have around 150 business processes consolidated into 50 uh, transaction processes or technologically transform the business processes. More than 15,000 transactions a day uh, and much more than that. So the end point that I, we are trying to say here in this particular slide is that it's about technology, it's about domain expertise, it is about SSE operations, and it is about a holistic view on how technology works as part of shared services. Let me get into a, a very specific process which we have deployed for them. This is about invoice processing. What we are talking about here is the board of initiation on the top could be any of the, any of the channels. So it's a multi-channel initiation mechanism where I can accept physical documents or so mails, attachments in mails, it could be a FTP folder, EDIs, XML, CXML, or it could be a portal where vendor can go and submit their invoices and we take it from there. What is more important is what you see on the uh, vertical part or the yellow or the, uh, the shaded part is the initiation data extraction. What we have tried to do in most of them is that most of these activities inside the business process are silent. The initiation is silent, extraction is silent, verification is manual, whereas validation is silent. Approval is manual, whereas the posting and parking are silent. So what we have done is we have tried to bring the best of the digital technologies. Here, let's take an example of extraction. We can extract. There are two technologies in the world for extraction, OCR and pattern matching. What we have as an extraction logic is we extract with OCR engine, we extract with pattern matching engine, we get the values of each of the fields, we compare which is needed as given the best of the confidence level, take that value and populate back. The idea is to maximize the throughput of the extraction engines so that there could be less of data entry or data corrections post during the processing, during when processing happens. Right? So what is also important in this case is that it has led, it has helped us in moving the transaction from a typical scan, data enter, or extract, verify, validate, match, approval, post kind of the scenario to a much more larger view where what Samir was talking about as the futuristic shared service, we have an extraction engine which can extract about 90%, do an auto validate, and do an auto matching by connecting to the ERPs and can send for approval automatically by the system. It gets approved, it comes back, and then it gets automatically posted. The idea is that the more and more first time right scenarios come, the more and more transaction will pass through the auto validate process, and it will be easier to do a mere touchless processing of transactions. I'm taking invoice here as example because that is one of the key processes that get automated as part of uh, any shared service. So what we are talking about is, is a kind of a discipline come a robust digital transformation system 
which takes care of any, which takes input from any source, does all the activities required, connects to various applications, auto validates, auto matches, and then pushes it into the, uh, the, the, the posting and into the other part. So the idea is that the more activities you make silent or auto, the more will be the efficiency and productivity within the team. And not only that, in case if there is a further elevation required to the process, where you say it's not just the transactional data, but we need to check on various uh, hygiene check of the vendor, of the, of, uh, of the way things have been getting processed, etc., etc., then we can also have a predictive processing where we can check the last straight through percentile of this vendor from a, say sampling of 100 or 1000 vendors. We can look at advances with the vendor, we can look at non-regular clicks and debits and if they are there, then we can push this transaction again for some kind of a verification before they can be auto pushed. This is just to give an idea saying that how any transaction can be made more of touchless or near touchless to ensure that the futuristic shared services can be more virtual uh, than what they are today. It's a graded process. So just to uh, substantiate on what we are talking about is about uh, the digitization uh, interface where the first level, the first time right scenario, I scan, I see the image on the left side or the right side and I see a lot of information on the left side. So the first level of check on whether the image has been captured right or not is taken care by the digitization engine. If not, I can push it the document through as an attachment as part of an email, which can also be pushed into the digital uh, which is the workflow. Or I can also have a vendor portal where the vendor can come and submit the transaction, query their uh, uh, status of their invoices, and also do some kind of a fee of flip rather than uh, calling the shared service or calling the buyers or the procurement teams, asking them on a day-to-day -day basis about what is the status of my invoice, why things are not getting paid and all. Not only that, we can also bring in the reports which are required by the vendors, like a vendor ledger, be presented as part of this portal, so that they know what is the status of their invoice. If there are discrepancies or exceptions, then they will also be highlighted as part of this. The beauty of the business process management system, which is a part of the offering, is also that the forms are dynamic and they render based on the size of the device interface. And what you see is a color coded screen. So the moment I go to a particular field, if they have been extracted by the extraction engine, then automatically they zoom the area from where they have uh, extracted the value. And the color codes that you see is all the confidence level given by the extraction engine, whether it is 90% and above or 80% and above, 70% and above, these are all configurable. The, this enables the user to do check, to check and modify or verify only the fields which are of less accuracy. Right? So uh, going beyond, I can do a duplicate check, I can also give you the past invoices, it can also tell you the audit trail, it can give, it can even pull in the relevant applications interface itself directly so that user need not do untap and maneuver into other applications to provide the data entry, the verification, other things. This is also one of the factors of reducing the time spent by fees on uh, different activities within the shared service. We also have a native mobile app, so the activities can also be done by mobile for approvers and different stakeholders. We have an intelligent analytics-based dashboard engine where it gives you aging, liability reporting, visualization, and various other reports to take care of the internal as well as the external stakeholder, uh, internal and external stakeholder uh, requirements. What you see on the screen is the product focus areas or the concept areas for digital transformation. Rather than saying these are my product names, the product, the product uh, uh, visualization from Newgen has been based on the different aspects within the digital transformation focus areas. So most important is digitization, where you capture, extract, classify, archive and all. Then you have a process layer where it is taking care of all the business process orchestration, collaboration, and also the monitoring part. The adaptation, which is more of analyzing the contextualize the content and collaborating between different departments ensuring that the business flow gets into each and every functional department within the organization 
to take care of the end-to-end -end processing and also to bring in all stakeholders as part of the unified framework. And what are these technologies? These are content management, business process management, case management, and the customer communication management. What you see are enablers, which is uh, which is uh, the cloud, RPA, mobility, and uh, uh, analytics, along with the digital sensing. A deeper insight into the digital transformation in a product suite of Neogen. On the top, you see all the expectations, which are the agility, the revenue, collaboration, customer satisfaction and compliance. And the enterprise level expectations are more of strict to collaborative human process, adaptive case management. Right? So we, what do we mean by adaptive case management here is about a sequential flow on the business flow. Uh, business as part of the business process, or it could be a case management where it is ad hoc workflows. So the suite takes care of predetermined workflows as well as ad hoc workflows to ensure that every participant uses the tools to, to take care of the end-to-end -end automation. The rest all are uh, typical things that we speak about, which is uh, more of well, how the what are the drivers, the process modeler, the forms, adaptive forms simulations to see where our bottlenecks are, the extraction engine, the dashboarding engine called BAM, the business rules management engine to take care of the last level automation required, and of course the content management, which is the ECM part. Some of our marquee clients uh, in this space, uh, they span across verticals, so it is not just about uh, manufacturing or uh, airline or process industries, we span across retail, we span across the globe to take care of their uh, global shared services or captive units across the world. It's not only in India or Middle East or Africa. We have uh, shared services across the globe and cater to many of the Fortune clients. Coming to Nugent Profile, we are almost a uh, 27 year old organization. We have, every year we keep adding uh, 50 plus logo, new clients onto our uh, organization. We span across 66 countries. Uh, one of the top, out of the top three verticals, shared services and uh, the captives and non-captives are part of that. We are a technically rich company. We have 44 patent filings uh, in India as well as in the United States. As we said, uh, we are a platform-based company for the digital transformation. We have technologies in the space of ECM, BPM, content extraction, customer communication management, RP analytics, and mobility. We have a lot of templatized solutions which are ready to deploy, 60 to 70 percent ready for any shared services, any vertical, any process. What we do is only the gap analysis of the client requirements, fix the gaps and deploy it. So our time to go live is much, much faster than typical point solutions or grounds of development. And we do a lot of other services which includes uh, setting up of the mail rooms, delivery, we talk about support. We continue to take care of the support even post go live and beyond, and provide upgrades and uh, fixes, and also do the value assessment on a continuous basis to ensure that customers derive the benefit of our products we year on year. Our experience on the shared service automation, uh, as uh, Samir said, is span across FND, HR, common uh, across admin and HR and then the other areas like supply chain as well as the export related organizations. And we have a multi-model approach. We, our proposition for SSEs depend on the nature of the SSE, whether they are green field or brown field or a more of a mature shared service. So we take a maturity level. We have a defined process of technology as well as Way we can continuously improve the future partner. As we said, we have the world class product. all products are owned, developed, trademark, IPR, user. We have the domain, we have done in more than 100 SSC implementations. Of course, we have a delivery platform along that comes in is complete of the technology vendor, take your intimate ownership, and we are future ready. We invest a lot on our RD, and all, with all these product suites, we have been able to give the latest technology advancements to all of our 
clients for all these 27. I now hand it over to Sumit for the Q&A part. All right. And so thank you for such an interesting service centers. I'm pretty sure that audience uh, got a detailed understanding of how next generation SSEs is leveraging new ways of work to enterprise value and focus areas of digital transformation. I've got a few questions now. I'll just uh, uh, see them. So the first question uh, is from uh, is for Samir here. Uh, uh, is regarding to is is setting up of shared services and independent and it uh, independent entity. No, it is not. I'll you know you can digital transformation organization uh, a separate internal place but uh, uh, what we've seen it is uh, uh, then that center can play on the transformation Definitely. So, Vortex based complete uh, automation in future make uh, shared service centers virtual. Is that the future we're looking forward to? Uh, yes and no. Robotic and PPM uh, based automation processing and STP can make processes virtual or touchless. That is what I was presenting on that. Power perception and management, the tracking and controls, and also a lot of insights that Samir was talking about, about analytics, transforming businesses, change organization, or the retail organization analytics, and a lot of continuous process improvements, including the standard SOP, will continue to be driven from SSUs. So while the process can become virtual, SSCs will continue to uh, add value. Maybe they will move away from the uh, monotonous work of human-based data entry and processing. Understood. 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 Uh, the next one uh, is for Samir. Samir, is uh, what is your take uh, on BPR? For setting up green shared service center, is it a must for business process reengineering exercise to be undertaken by these organizations? Typically, these kind of queries do come up. So, do they take up this exercise initially? Yeah, I think that's a that's a that's a question that comes up fairly uh, regularly in many discussions. As you know, companies are evaluating either setting up or scaling up shared services. Do we re-engineer the process first and then move to shared services, or we move the process share to shared services first and then uh, redesign the re-engineer the process? So there is no uh, you know one answer. There is no right answer there. It I think depends on the context of the process and how it's how uh, uh, how how quickly how. Uh, you know, what's the kind of process readiness, what is, what is the kind of process maturity, and what's the kind of speed uh, different organizations uh, are looking at to set it up and running. So, uh, I think if, if the, the answer is more around, uh, and there are kind of advantages, pros and cons for both. Uh, if you re engineer the process first and then move to shared services, it obviously, you know, you're starting on a, on a clean slate. Uh, all the issues, etc. or at least most of the process issues or challenges are addressed. So you can start to new kind of fresh within shared service. So that, that the side is that engineering, this is might take time, especially where uh, technology changes are required and you're kind of needing to work with your legacy system. So that's the 
of the kids to uh, share services first and then in any region here. Easy to do that in a much more controlled environment. However, if the process is just completely broken, there are too many issues there. Uh, it's kind of good to, uh, and speed is not a kind of a criteria, not a uh, you know, showstopper. It's good to kind of re engineer or at least partly re engineer before moving to shed. Understood, understood. Not just a mandatory, but there are multiple variables associated with it going ahead. Understood. Uh, the next one, I assume, this is for Sriram here. Uh, Sriram, uh, the question is uh, what should be the business expectation from the shared service center automation tool? See, uh, the expectation can be multifold, but the most important is whatever may be the automation expectation, it should be more of how my business can be more predictable. Or rather, whatever I do, it should be happening within the defined for a timeline or SLA or PAT, whatever we call it is. So what is the focus area should be, one is the straight through processing, maturing to first time right kind of scenario. This will increase the visibility and will also, and adding to that, the faster and informed decision making will enable the, will enable the, what we call it as the predictability of the business. And to bring all these things together, the important business expectation from the SSC automation tool should be end-to-end -end automation. No activity within the shared service should be done outside of the digital framework. The moment that is achieved, then we will have a lot of insights into the way the shared service is working and we can bring, we can close all the bottlenecks to bring the business more predictable. Rather, any process should be working in the defined way. It should not go beyond what we have, what has been envisaged as part of the transformation system. Okay. So it's more of predictability of business. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, I have a couple more questions here, but I think the, the next question seems a follow up. Uh, looks like a follow up actually to me, uh, to what you have just mentioned. So I'll just take this question from uh, uh, to Sriram now, uh, which uh, is, uh, what are the key imperatives for successful tool deployment for a shared service center? Uh, how should the organization go ahead with that? Sriram? Yeah, yeah. See, if you look at uh, uh, the tool, the most important is the extensibility of the tool to provide the end-to-end -end automation the adaptability to the current applications which are there and how seamlessly it can integrate with them to provide a unified framework. And the third most important is how scalable it is to the volumes of transaction, the dynamicity of the business and the new, uh, addition of new processes that might be coming up. All these three are key important uh, aspects from a tool perspective. The second most important is not just about the tool. Most important is how well this tool understands the domain, rather how well this tool has been implemented in various shared services scenarios and how business have tasted success by using this kind of tools and technologies. And not the least, the, the other important part will be the shouldering of responsibility for the improvements on a year-to-year -year basis. As we spoke about, continuous process improvement is the way to go for any shared service. And if to a tool that I'm deploying today cannot take care of the continuous process improvements, then the challenge will be that it will not be able to, uh, the shared service will not be able to grow along with the tool. So it is more important for the tool to be adapting to the shared service requirements in all aspects, business, internal organization, technology, and the scale. True, true. In fact, that's what uh, it's uh, resonated in Sameer's presentation as well, of how, you know, changing environments, global uh, environments, uh, the volatility which is there, how the how the SSE can change and adapt, and uh, which in turn means the tools need to be adapted. Correct. Uh, Sameer, I have, uh, I have a final question for you here uh, in the list. 
uh, as of now. So uh, the question is, uh, uh, how are organizations managing retention of knowledge on processes? No, sure. So uh, again, see again, while we spoke about uh, data and the, the large volumes that shared services are kind of dealing with, I think with data also, with that kind of volume of data, there comes an uh, unequally large volume of knowledge as well. And many organizations are realizing that it's not, I mean, knowledge doesn't come only in terms of structured data so that they can easily convert that into an SOP or a process documentation. So that was the old way of looking at knowledge with the assumption that knowledge only resides in a can only reside in a process documentation that can be used for training purposes but the, the reality is that the current knowledge resides in multiple means some part is uh, structured kind of uh, documentation or like sops etc but a large part or a, maybe a you know a large part is of other kind of information which is around uh, around the kind of uh, uh, experience that people carry <clears throat> carry uh, in, you know, both uh, the shared services staff and the kind of customers they kind of interact with those interactions that have those are also kind of knowledge artifacts that are kind of created uh, that are kind of uh, relevant right? uh, something has gone well in certain case uh, that we, might be replicable or kind of might be leveraged in another scenario and those are interactions that need to get uh, captured somewhere so, uh, so the point is, knowledge exists in a much more complex, diverse manner than it used to be, uh, that, you, that it used to in the past. So what leading organizations and shared service centers are doing are actively investing in a, lang in, in a knowledge management uh, kind of a solution, which is more than just a technology solution. It's more a, uh, you know, it's more a collaboration kind of solution where uh, one part is this, the structured knowledge which is captured as part of this process documentation but there's the other part which is around collaboration around kind of engagement around creating those uh, communities of practice or designated kind of uh, points of contact for different kinds of uh, questions or kind of knowledge kind of areas where you know any any, any if there's any kind of request or any kind of query they can be kind of uh, reached out or navigated to so that that's generally a part of a larger uh, knowledge uh, uh, knowledge platform that many uh, shared service centers are uh, are investing in and building these days so it's not only just the structured knowledge uh, in terms of documentation but also some of the collaboration engagement tools which capture all these knowledge artifacts understood very 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 relevant in fact not just the not just the process document but the all the interactions and all the collaboration uh, internally, which is happening as well as with the external entities, is 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 also important, and to capture that and have it internally disseminate is is very very critical. Right, right. So I think uh, that's all. I think I'm afraid we have actually exceeded our time limit now. And we don't have any questions as such. So thanks, uh, Shriram and uh, Samir, for your valuable insights. Uh, thank you to the entire audience for a valuable time and tremendous response. Uh, we shall be sending across uh, the presentation transcript for all the questions to you. Uh, so as of now, we'll say goodbye and have a great day. Thank you so much. Thanks.